Welcome back to Hardware Unbox for another GPU battle, though this one is a bit different to the norm. Now the most recently released GPUs from AMD and Nvidia, so their current generation offerings, but the most recently released uh, models are their slowest. So from AMD we have the RX 550 and we have the ASUS model here, that is actually a 4 gigabyte version, but we'll get to that in a moment. And then from the green team, NVIDIA, we have this passively cooled MSI GT 1030. That's right, it doesn't have the GTX branding, because NVIDIA doesn't deem this worthy uh, of being one, a, a GTX card, basically, one of their gaming, premium gaming models. It does only have 384 CUDA cores, so it's a little light on rendering power. Whereas the GTX 1050 features an MSRP of $110 US, the GT 1030 comes in well below $100 at just $70. Meanwhile, the RX 550 is slightly more expensive at the $80 MSRP, and of course, as this is an AMD graphics card right now, getting one at the MSRP is next to impossible. The markup though on the RX 550 isn't nearly as bad as some of the more higher end models. Right now, you can expect to pay about $90 US, and that makes it almost 30% more than the GT 1030. That said though, is the Radeon graphics card faster, and if so, by how much? Well, that's what we plan to find out in today's video. Typically speaking, these entry-level budget cards don't actually represent particularly great value, as the slightly more expensive models generally deliver a much better price-to-performance ratio. That though won't be the focus of this video, rather if you have less than $100 US to spend on a graphics card and you do want to buy a new graphics card and not used, which one of these two should you buy? The primary focus will be on eSports titles, so we'll be looking at games such as CSGO, Overwatch, and Dota 2, for example. Also, as a quick side note, if you do have a PC that is in need of an upgrade, or you'd just like to get an idea of what kind of upgrades you could make to an older PC, then check out our new Upgrade My PC Please series. Each week I check out five PCs from viewers and propose various upgrade plans, and then the viewers vote for which one they think should get the upgrade, and we go on and get those parts out to the winner. Anyway, it's a really cool series. Uh, check it out if you're interested. For testing, I've used our Ryzen 3 test system with the 1300X installed. No overclock has been applied to the CPU, but we are using 16 gigabytes of DDR4-3200 memory. Representing the green team is the MSI GT 1032GH LPOC, while the red team will be represented by the ASUS RX 554G. Yes, the AMD graphics card has more VRAM, but unfortunately this was all I was able to get my hands on for this test. This shouldn't have a noticeable impact on performance, but be aware the 4 gigabyte model does cost more at $110 US, and at this price it represents rather poor value. The graphs though are clearly labelled, and we're not trying to mislead anyone here. We are using a 4GB model to represent the RX 550, so again, please be aware of that. There's certainly no need to get your knickers in a knot about this in the comments section. I'm not trying to favour AMD. If you do have a big problem with this though, feel free to buy us a 2GB model, and we'll happily redo the tests. Anyway, enough of that, let's get to the benchmarks. First up we have Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I've been told there are a few of you guys that still enjoy this first person shooter, so let's check out the results. Those more serious about the game do like to play with the low quality settings, and here the GT 1030 and RX 550 deliver a very similar experience, though the GT 1030 was slightly better overall. Both did maintain over 100 FPS at all times, and allowed the average frame rate to exceed 200 FPS. That being said though, I am told that the serious game is like 300 plus FPS in this title, but you know, beggars can't be choosers and all that. For the price, the performance is very capable in this title. If you are all about that eye candy, well then the very high quality preset still allows for over 160 FPS on average, and here the RX 550 and GT 1030 did deliver the exact same experience. Overwatch is another super popular first person shooter, and it can be much more visually demanding than CSGO. Even so, using the low quality preset, the game was very playable using either GPU, though the GT 1030 was a whisker faster. Here the 1% low result was 8% higher using the Nvidia GPU. That said though, increasing the quality setting to the high preset swings things heavily in favour of the RX 550. Before anyone jumps to conclusions though and claims this is down to the 4GB VRAM buffer of the RX 550 card, please note at 1080p using the high quality preset the game never allocates more than 940 megabytes worth of assets at any given time in our 60 second benchmark pass. So the fact that the RX 550 has 4GB of VRAM is of no consequence here. In the end, for those that like to turn things up a bit higher, we'll be better off with the RX 
RX 550 in Overwatch as it allowed for 23% better performance using the higher quality preset. Rocket League is one of the most entertaining and easy to run games out there right now and unsurprisingly because of this it is massively popular. If you turn everything down using the high performance preset, the game spits out an average of 245 frames per second with the RX 550 and 201 FPS with the GT 1030. I'm not really sure if you need more frames than that in this title, but either way the Radeon GPU was 22% faster. Then when you max the game out using the high quality preset with MLAA enabled, the RX 550 was 24% faster with an average of 77 FPS, which I thought was quite good at 1080p. For representing the multiplayer online battle arena type games, I've used Dota 2 and its replay system is excellent for accurate benchmark results. This allows me to repeatedly target a busy part of the game to test. As a result, I'm not going to bother testing other titles such as League of Legends, for example. It's a less demanding game than Dota 2, so if these cards can play Dota 2, then you can rest assured they can play League. Using the lowest quality preset, which is called Fastest, the GT1030 rendered 4% more frames on average, but did allow for a 20% greater 1% low result. Much the same was seen when using the best looking preset. Here the GT1030 was 23% faster than the RX 550 for the 1% low result, despite both delivering the same 60-ish FPS on average. If you play a lot of Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, then the GT1030 looks to be the best option here. Using the low quality preset, it was 9% faster than the RX 550, but again, it's the 1% low that makes the big difference. Here the GeForce GPU was 31% faster. It's a similar story using the high quality preset, though both the RX 550 and GT1030 did deliver a similar average frame rate. The overall experience, however, was much better on the GeForce GPU as it maintained a 17% greater 1% low result. World of Tanks was tested using the HD client with the frame cap removed. Using the low quality preset, which is titled Minimum, we see that both GPUs allow for almost 200 FPS on average, and the experience was much the same using either the AMD or Nvidia hardware. Jumping from the minimum quality preset to the high saw a massive decline in frame rate, and this isn't even the highest quality preset in the game. Neither GPU were able to deliver what I would call playable performance using the maximum quality preset. Anyway, using the high quality preset, the GT1030 was 17% faster than the RX 550 on average, and a massive 35% faster for the 1% low result. Those of you keen on playing Quake Champions will be best served by the GT1030, and despite this being an AMD sponsored title, the GeForce graphics card was vastly superior. Using the low quality preset, the GT1030 was 23% faster for the average frame rate and 35% faster for the 1% low. Things got significantly worse for the Radeon GPU when using the high quality preset. Here the GT1030 was 60% faster on average and incredibly 93% faster for the 1% low. You have to think this is a driver issue for the RX 550 in this title. The Battlefield 1 results were quite interesting. Using the low quality preset, the RX 550 was actually 12% faster on average and 20% faster for the 1% low results. So that's a fantastic result there for the AMD GPU. However, once we increase the visual quality with the high preset, both GPUs are capped at 28 FPS on average with a minimum of 22 FPS. These results look CPU limited, but they obviously aren't. In any case, all this does is prove that neither GPU can handle the high quality preset at 1080p, and obviously the ultra quality preset is certainly out of the question as well. StarCraft 2 is about the only game I really ever play. I love this title, but damn, it just sucks when it comes to CPU utilization. The biggest hurdle here is the Ryzen 3 1300X, or at least the game's inability to properly utilize this quad-core CPU. For testing though, I am using a 4v4 replay and skipping to the middle of the game where the action is pretty thick. So this is really more of a CPU test than a GPU test, admittedly. Because of this, we see much the same 1% low performance using either the low or high quality presets. The RX 550 though did prove to be the best option for this title, though the margins weren't exactly big. Moving on to the last game I tested, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and this is a title that hates low-end GPUs. Using the lowest possible quality settings at 1080p, the GT1030 averaged a console-like 32 FPS, while the RX 550 managed just 28 FPS. Both did provide a horrible experience, so it's little consequence that the GeForce GPU was faster here. Obviously, increasing the quality level didn't help things, and now the game is completely unplayable, if it wasn't already. Finally, when it comes to power consumption, they are both much of a muchness. As you might expect, the GeForce 10 series car was slightly more fuel efficient, but even so, overall system consumption was just 9% lower. Neither car requires a PCIe power connector, and both run very cool, so I see this as somewhat of a non-issue for these models. Picking between these two entry-level discrete graphics cards, 
really isn't easy as we've just seen and it will as it often does come down to the games you play. Uh, that said though the only game that really threw up mixed results was Overwatch and that title we saw if you're targeting high FPS and the GT 1030 is the way to go but if you do prefer to crank the quality settings up a little bit and sort of get a balance there of playable performance with nice looking visuals and the RX 550 was better under those conditions. Um, the RX 550 though I think Overall is probably a tougher sell. I'll get to those reasons why that is in a moment. Uh, when it comes to the performance just seen, the RX 550, it was clearly the better choice for games such as Battlefield 1 and Rocket League. It was also slightly better in StarCraft, though the margins there were less extreme. Meanwhile, the GeForce GT 1030, that was miles better in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and quite surprisingly, Quake Champions. Uh, it also provided a better experience in Rainbow Six Siege and Dota 2, while it was slightly faster in tiles such as Counter-Strike and World of Tanks. So, given that, if I had to pick between these two cards, if I could only have one, which is the situation that many of you are faced with, uh, I think overall, this would be the one I'd get. And I have to say, this MSI passively cooled card was very neat indeed. It ran at very reasonable temperatures. And yeah, it's passively cooled. I mean, check it out. Slim little card. It'd be cool in a half height uh, chassis as well. Anyway. There is, however, the issue of whether or not you should invest in these budget entry-level cards to begin with. In the case of the RX 550, it's a seriously tough sell, even at the $80 US MSRP, let alone the $90 price they're currently selling at. For just $30 more, the GTX 1050 is readily available, and we recently saw that model delivers around 90% more frames in games such as Destiny 2 at 1080p. This means you're paying 33% more for around 90% more performance, and with that, it enables a much more enjoyable gaming experience. It's sort of the same situation with the GT 1030 though. From a price perspective, it does make a heck of a lot more sense. The GTX 1050 is around 70% more expensive, so the fact that it is again around 90% faster in games such as Destiny 2 isn't that bad when it comes to the price versus performance ratio. The $50 price gap here is quite large, and it really means that the GT 1030 is genuinely a viable option, even if the GTX 1050 is overall better value. For me, the GT 1030 is the perfect pairing for something like a G4560 or that kind of type budgety CPU, which obviously makes sense for a budget GPU. And for me, the G4560 plus the GT 1030, that really would be the ultimate budget esports combo, in my opinion. And just finally, before I wrap this up, I will touch on... FreeSync. Yes, this card does support FreeSync. FreeSync monitors are cheap, G-Sync monitors aren't, so G-Sync's really not an option for this card. Whereas if you have a FreeSync monitor or you're planning on getting one, then yes, this may be a better option. For me, I think I'd still gravitate towards the GT 1030 because it is just that bit faster in some of the more important games that I liked or the esports titles that I think are a bit more important. But totally up to you, or I'm just putting it out there now, I'm touching on it. Be aware that FreeSync can offer a better experience. I'm not sure if esports type gamers want to use an adaptive sync technology anyway, but be aware of that. If you have a FreeSync monitor, this may be a better choice. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the benchmarks. I'll probably do a bit more testing with these in other AAA titles, not just the esports stuff, if there's a big enough demand. I'm your host, Steve. Catch you again next time.